up guys today we are talking about the 60s golden decade I wanted to film right away but I decided to watch a couple of movies just to make sure I've covered everything and uh, a couple of those ended up in the top so I'm glad I did that without further ado number 10 Bonnie and Clyde 1967 the director flat out gave up on this movie and uh, it is a well documented fact and I think that's a travesty because this movie had a lot of potential. Even in this unfinished form it's quite good. This is a story about Bonnie and Clyde and it's based on real events but uh, almost half of it is fictitious. But nevertheless it's a good movie. And it's a very intriguing movie because I've never seen a movie where a protagonist was impotent. That's a very interesting topic. Yeah, moving on. Number 9. Harakiri. 1962. It's a Japanese movie, but it's not a Kiro Kurosawa movie, which is quite unusual, I'd say. It's still 7 out of 10, so it's not a great movie but it's a movie about social constructs mainly about the social construct of honor like what honor is why it's a social construct how impractical this thing is how ridiculous this thing is and yeah if you're interested in the topic of honor you definitely 100% should watch this movie like, if honor means a lot to you, I mean, it's this 21st century, so why would it? But if you're still haunted by this concept, definitely watch this movie. Yeah. Number eight, Lolita, 1962. Now, this is also a 7 out of 10. Basically, the first four movies in this list are 7 out of 10. This is a Kubrick movie, and I generally don't like Kubrick movies. Basically, I'd say it's a dark comedy. Like, it isn't classified as this, but, like, Kubrick definitely had fun with it. And Kubrick can make a great comedy movies. It's not a comedy movie, but it has a certain vibe to it. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend watching it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I can't think a single person who would be interested in watching it. Yeah, but still, 7 out of 10. Number 7. Lawrence of Arabia. Now, this is a very well-known movie. And I think it's one of those movies that deserve their score. Because it's rated as 8.3 on IMDb. I still give it a 7 out of 10, but like, it's epic. It's like Lord of the Rings levels of epic. They are not similar movies, but like the level of epicness is kind of similar. And David Lean, who is the director of this movie, he's very powerful at it, at making movies epic. Despite how big the events that are happening in the movies, or how little he still manages to make them look epic so i'd recommend this movie to someone who is interested in uh, how arab countries came to be i wouldn't say it's a very historical movie or maybe it is i don't know shit about history but like if at least 80 percent of it is true yeah watch it also, if you like epic movies, also watch it. It's pretty long, so if you have no interest in either of those two things, I wouldn't recommend watching it. Number six, The Dirty Dozen. Now we are at eight out of ten territory. I talked about uh, war movies in the previous video and uh, this is exactly the type of a war movie that is very distinct. 
in a sense it's basically full metal jacket light version like the plot is very similar but this is a british movie you can kind of see where the differences would be unlike the full metal jacket uh, this movie has its characters very fleshed out like there are 13 characters and uh, you kind of get to know each of them even though it's not extremely long it's only only <laughs> it's only two and a half hours but this is enough time to get to know these characters unlike certain movie that has like 50 characters and gives you no time to learn anything about them so if you like character driven movies i wouldn't even say it's a war movie like sure it's second world war and they're shooting bad guys and all that but this is such a small portion of this movie that you kind of forget about it the film metal jacket is separated into two equal parts and the first part which is the best part is a boot camp and here 75 percent of this film is spent in the camp and the rest is during the war so yeah number five this is a movie that i watched recently like if i didn't watch it it wouldn't be in the stop at all and that would have been a tragedy because this movie is made by the same director of lawrence of arabia it's david lean and the movie is called dr Zhivago, uh, 1965 so this movie is based on a Pasternak novel, a Russian writer. And the movie is basically about Russian revolutions. The main actor, the main character is gorgeous. Like he pulls all, all the weight. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, the director failed, but like this dude, he's great. Like, he's better than the main character in Lawrence of Arabia. And he has the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen on a man. It's three hours long. So, yeah. If you like long movies. <laughs> if you're interested in what's it like to live in Russia. <laughs> if you'd like to know... <laughs> If you'd like to know why Russians don't mind putting this much, you can watch this movie and find out. Like, Russians had to endure so much from their own government. They, they've grown accustomed to, to everything, basically. So, like, if you want to know how it came to this, watch it. It's very true to what actually has been happening in this country like forever <laughs> since the beginning of times <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay the following four movies are all 10 out of 10 so before we get to them films you were expecting to see in this top and they are not in it from russia with love one out of ten I hate this movie. I hate it. To Kill a Mockingbird, 3 out of 10. Breakfast at Tiffany's, 4 out of 10. Mary Poppins, 4 out of 10. The Sound of Music, 4 out of 10. West Side Story, 5 out of 10. 2001 Space Odyssey, 6 out of 10. Yeah. Okay, now back to the good movies. Number four, for a few dollars more, Sergio Leone. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember anything about this movie. I even watched the trailer before filming this and it didn't bring up any memories at all. But like, I believe myself, I believe myself from the past. And <laughs> if I said, this is a 10 out of 10 movie. It is a 10 out of 10 movie. I, I ain't gonna watch it again just to confirm it. So, yeah. It's a great western. 
if you're interested in westerns, definitely watch it. Well, if you're interested in westerns, most probably you've already watched it. <laughs> so it's kind of a mood recommendation. <laughs> but like, if you haven't watched any westerns at all, <laughs> you might watch this one. It will help you to understand if you like westerns or not. No. Number three. Z, 1969. Now, I would be very surprised if you heard about this movie. Even more so if you watched it. Because this is a Greek movie. <laughs> which is very unusual. Moreover, this is a political drama movie. <laughs> which is also very unusual. And it deserves this 10 out of 10 like it deserves it basically this is a film about government corruption and everyone especially americans should watch it to have a sliver of understanding what is actually happening up there you think your land is free <laughs> Number two, this is the only Kubrick film I liked. Like, yeah, we had Lolita, but I mean, it's 7 out of 10. This is 10 out of 10. And this is the best comedy I've ever watched. Yeah, I know, Kubrick comedy, yeah. Kind of like not his thing, but actually this is incredibly his thing. If he focused on comedy instead of horror, he would have been so much greater. Like, seriously. Like, this is hilarious. This movie is like belly bursting good. I don't know if you have this expression in English, but like, it's funny. <laughs> the point is that it's funny. And it's rather short, which is always welcome. It's only 95 minutes long. Basically, Kubrick makes fun of Cold War. The movie title is very long, but I'll <laughs> tell you. But I'll read it out loud. <laughs> Doctor Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. 1964. So, if you don't like Kubrick, <laughs> watch this movie, <laughs> and we will both love this movie and hate Kubrick for choosing the wrong speciali specialization. Number one. <laughs> Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what is number one? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, I know. We all we've already had uh, for a few dollars more. But this is not just a Western movie. This is a great fucking movie. If you want to know anything about movies, you have to watch this. Seriously, this is. I I don't usually say this, but this is a must watch. Like, seriously, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> drop everything and go and see it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm in a very strange mood today. So, okay, uh, that's all. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I won't stop until I tell the world which movies are good and which movies are shit, even though they're in the old tops. If you have any questions or you want to discuss movies with me, leave a comment below, uh, like DM me on Discord. Yeah, bye. Determinism is freedom. <laughs>